What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Chad's Home. Today, I have the absolute pleasure of talking to a renowned talent agent whose roster is honestly one of the best in the game, from The Garden to Hockey Dad, Jasper Bones, TV Girl, a bunch of others, including some Chad's Home favorites who have been on the show, from Sitting on Stacey to Blackpool and Story Slaughter. Um, and uh, he just started his own talent agency. It's called Tor Peachy, and I'm very excited to be chatting to him about it. And that is Mr. Troy Lusk. What's up, Troy? What's up, Chad? Happy to be here. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. And a massive, massive congratulations on starting the uh, your own agency. Thanks, man. It's been a, uh, as you can imagine, whirlwind of a year. It's yeah. uh, I've always referenced the music industry is the wild wild west and holy shit did things just get more wild over the last year <laughs> oh man especially in in that that touring world it's like i felt i felt so bad for not only you know the artists who made a living on the road but all the venues that we we known to you know grow and love and and a lot of them here in la had to shut down sadly but luckily most have gotten through um but yeah, I mean, you're coming out on the other side and, and starting this new venture. It's incredible. Um, first question, which is a, a basic question, but how, how'd you land on the name uh, Torpici? Great question to start things <laughs> off with. <laughs> um, how did I come up with it? A lot of sleepless nights. I think that's one of the <laughs> hardest things to do to, when you're starting your own thing yeah. is to come up with a name. And I went through them all. Uh, but I... I definitely didn't want to be what you may think of as a status quo agency name. Um, the norm, you know, certainly yeah. not a three letter, uh, agency name or a, uh, you know, ending with a touring or a booking. So I thought, you know, I, the, the agency's foundation is, is creativity and trying to be unique and forward thinking. Um, and essentially I knew that I wanted to keep a something to do with touring because that's the core of the, the agency. That's the core of business. So I wanted the word touring or tour, something involved with tour. And, um, peachy is a slang word that I've loved for a long time. You know, it's, it's wonderful. It's excellent. Um, it's peachy man. And, uh, <laughs> I think it fits kind of the roster of artists and who I represent. And so, uh, I kind of went back with like, oh, do I want to do uh, peachy touring or something like that? And I was like, no, no, I've never heard anything tour peachy. So I just went with it. I thought, I uh, it. yeah, that's how I got there. I love it. That's great. Yeah, it's a solid name. And and I love the meaning behind it, too. Um, so what, uh, you know, obviously, like, like you said, it was kind of the Wild West this last year, and, and it led you to this point. Um, but can you kind of walk us through even a little bit before that? Like, I know you've had quite the career as an agent over the years. Um, but yeah, like, what, what was like your road to to finally getting here? I've always looked at myself as kind of having that entrepreneur spirit. Um, and so I always envisioned at some point in my career, whatever that may be, that I'd be doing it my way. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and, uh, you know, I got into agenting kind of just as an opportunity that fell into my lap. I was a tour manager for five plus years, kind of in the warp tour style scene. Um, and I said, you know, this life isn't this lifestyle on the road six, eight, 10 months out of the year isn't for me long term. I want yeah. a family. I want to get married. I want to do all that. Right. And so I went back to school um, and knocked out a degree. I two years did that. I already had some previous junior college stuff. So did that quickly. And then when I was uh, done with that, it was just kind of through relationships that I had made through networking out on the road as a tour manager that led me to an opportunity at, uh, first it was Circle Talent Agency as an assistant. And, um, you know, I was given an opportunity pretty early there to sign bands as an agent. And I was, uh, I'll call it lucky for sure. Um, some of it is luck, but I also believe in, you know, having an ear for talent. And my first two signs were the garden and the frights and today wow. you know they're arguably my 
my biggest artists on the roster still. Wow. And um, so, uh, yeah, that's kind of where it started. And uh, I was at APA for three years. And, um, you know, this pandemic hit and it kind of threw all of us for a curveball. You know, shit, man, no, no money. <laughs> yeah. No concerts, no money. Right. You know, so, right. uh, yeah. Uh, just kind of was the opportunity at the right time. We can get into like the landscape of the agency world, but it's just timing. That's how yeah. life is. And I've learned it over and over again. It's just timing. And right now is the right time for me. And uh, we're doing it. I love it. Yeah, I love it. And that, that's so cool. I didn't know that those two bands were with you from the start. That, that's pretty incredible to be able to have that relationship for so long because I know one thing in the talent world is there's no contracts, right? So it's like a, um, people could bounce to other agencies and there's always people trying to headhunt and whatnot. So that must, sh I mean, that speaks that speaks world to, to what you do. It's a, yeah, everything is essentially a handshake deal, you know, yeah. a verbal agreement. And uh, that's why we're all paranoid agents <laughs> in this world. Um, I try not to be because you can drive yourself insane. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, those two bands specifically as a reference, um, I think it's just a testament to the relationships that we've built. And that's, uh, you know, I I prioritize that. I prioritize re relationships. Hey, if it's a thank you note or a personal call or shit like that, you know, that goes a long way. And ultimately I care. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And it makes it very attractive. I mean, uh, obviously you've built such an incredible roster based off that philosophy. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, is that kind of part of your philosophy like for the agency, like for Tor Peachy, like artist friendly, um, you know, just being a good person, like making things happen. And hopefully that would lead to longevity with your clients. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's all about the artist or artists. Uh, that's what it's all about. I want to be here without them for sure. <laughs> and so that's what I make it all about. It's all about them. You know, um, I, it's never about me and I can get into, uh, I know there's a question down the line about giving <laughs> advice or getting advice. And that's something that I've learned is, uh, it's not about me as an agent. Uh, it's always about the artist. Yeah. I love that. And, and, um, so obviously it must be scary like breaking off on your own but there's a lot of excitement like uh, i imagine you know the freedom to do everything that you want to do and to do different things like what like what um yeah i guess like what's the most exciting part that's like with this brand new venture i know it's kind of uh, a new world for you but what's uh what's keeping you really excited right now certainly a part of it is the do it your own way you know um but ultimately what's most exciting is, is having that and then being able to invest in people and artists and everyone in the industry, um, just putting a full investment because there's, n I mean, there's no more excitement or passion or purpose that anyone can feel more, the, more so than when you're literally doing it for yourself. You know, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. it's, this is my baby. This is the brain, you know, this is, this is everything I've ever wanted to do. So I'm, I've never been more, I've never felt more purpose. Um, and that's yeah. exciting. You know, yeah. it's, I mean, how many times have we heard the interviews or the, the quotes of, you know, people, it, I can't, I, I don't even look forward to waking up in the morning because I got to do this shit for this person. And, I don't like them. <laughs> right, 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 you know? right. So I love, you know, booking can become redundant, but investing and having relationships meaningful um, and helping each other achieve goals, dude, there's nothing more rewarding and, and than that. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't have a boss to, to yell at, I guess, and you don't, <laughs> or you don't have a boss to get yelled at by, so that's gotta be nice. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm gonna say that's absolutely false because right now I have 20 bosses. They're all my artists, true, true. and they're gonna fucking yell at me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Very good point. <laughs> um, so if you could maybe explain like, 
uh, uh, quickly like what um, a typical agent's role is and then maybe how Torpici is like gonna go above and beyond that or like how or how you see it as like different from maybe some of these other agencies out there well I think that really the responsibility of the agent is to through their their knowledge and experience and expertise specifically in well touring deal negotiations routing there's a lot of variables that go into it but um it's yeah essentially it's uh i totally lost my train of thought <laughs> that's all right it happens. it happens it happens <laughs> how torpici would kind of be uh differ from like other agencies or how you want it to kind of stand out or, you said I was going into the roles, I guess. Okay. Of, yeah. Of the agent. Yeah. Um, and that... and I look at it as to build a sustainable long term touring career for the artist. Um, you know, I don't I don't look at any I don't commit to be the agent for anyone that is interested in short term monetary compensation. Mm. Um, you know, I want to. I want to be. I want to have this be an investment on both sides for a long-term touring career. Yeah. And so the decisions are, the decisions we make are based on that. Um, you know, whereas maybe this uh, cash grab that could be a disaster. You know, <laughs> right. let's let's pass on. Right. Whereas you know this other top opportunity may not be as uh, financially of a highlight. Um, right. But, you know, we do that because it's going to, in the long term, build more of a s sustainable touring career. Right. Yeah. So is that something um, when you're obviously you have such an ear for talent and you've discovered a lot of incredible artists um, when you have that like introductory talk of like, you know, is that part of it is like, hey, like I want I, do you like build out an idea of like, I want you to play, you know, the Roxy and then the El Rey and the Fonda and then Coachella and or is it like, like, do you have like a goal in mind, like years ahead of, of what they are at right now kind of thing? Yes. Yes. And no, I think that there should always be a vision that's like agreeable between agent artist, and manager or essentially whoever the team is, there should be that vision. Uh, but we should all be flexible and open-minded because there's no manual or transcript transcript to that says this is how you do this. Right, um, right. And because you, you know you see artists blow up overnight with a TikTok nowadays. Uh, it used to be the radio single. Uh, then you have those career touring bands that have grinded it out for 25 years, um, and so it could be one of anything that allows you to grow. Um, so, so yeah, there should be an ag agreed, Hey, this is, the, this is where we want to go. Um, because that's certainly part of my job as the agent is to get them closer to those, to that goal or to achieve those goals. Right. Yeah. And, and do you have like a certain thing you look for in an artist when you want to bring them on? Like, um, a certain, maybe a mindset or, or, uh, I don't know. Like, like what, what makes the cut for the, uh, for the tour PT roster? Something, something that stands out. Um, it's always, I play to play to strength. What is the strength? Uh, identify the strength of the artist. And is that going to appeal to people and how many people and uh, what do you imagine the demand be? But I always look for something that is really amazing whether it's the vocals or the lyrics right. or the guitar or you know the musicianship of the band as a whole is the drummer the star what is right. what is the star here what makes this different than all the other really good bands cuz right. man there's so much good music out there right now um, and i just always try to find that one thing that I think allows this band to potentially be a headliner, um, maybe rather than some of these other ones that'll, that'll be, you know, the, 
the sunset band at on main stage at a festival. You know, right, I, right. I want to, I want to, I want the headliner. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's killer. Um, and, and it, when you actually discover these artists, are you, do you just get sent like, a, I'm, I'm sure you get sent a ton of music all the time unsolicited, but do you have like go-to people that you kind of trust their ears or like, are you just going through Spotify discover like all the time? Like how do you actually go about discovering the artists? It's a combination of all of the above. Mm. I love to, whether it's a Tuesday evening or a Saturday morning or a Sunday afternoon, I love to browse through, you know, Spotify, uh, discover, you know, um, similar artists to bands that I already represent, um, going through the rabbit hole of YouTube videos. Uh, I put, I put in the work for A and R, um, I had something, I mean, I love music. And so I can listen to music and go through that rabbit hole for hours upon hours. Um, with that being said, I've signed a lot of artists through referrals, um, credible sources, trusted people uh, that I, you know, all, know also have found success representing artists. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's probably the one that. Um, allows me to be interested right off the bat. You know, if say X person comes to me and says, you got to check this out or, you know, to be honest, a lot, I ask my artists all the time. Mm. They're, I mean, they're, they're in it, you know, they're amongst the other artists. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of times, you know, I ask, I ask the artists themselves or they'll come to me and be like, Troy, you got to check this out. Yeah. Um, and I've signed bands that way. Um, so it's, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of all of them combined. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I, and, and that's very true because I was talking a story about how you, how like you guys got in touch and she was like, yeah, like he just messaged me on Instagram one day or something. And I was like, that's really cool to have a, an agent of your size to like be still discovering like up and coming artists like that and just hitting them up instead of like waiting until they have a big manager or a big label involved or like whatever it is. So that's very, very cool. Story story is one I found right off the bat that I was like, holy shit, <laughs> what is this name first and foremost? And <laughs> whole, this song is incredible. So I was, that was one that just showed up on, you know, like a playlist of mine and I was just listening to him casually listening. And that one came through and I was like, what got me was the Dolly Parton lyric in the first like two lines. Yeah. And that, again, I've always been someone that really digs deep into lyrics. I, I like to read lyrics. I like to write lyrics. I like to, um, really, really dig into that. So, uh, that was something I was like, did she just reference Dolly Parton? <laughs> That's awesome. Cause I love Dolly Parton right now. My wife does too. And, uh, <laughs> I was like, I got, I got to look more into this yeah. story slaughter person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the name stuck out too when when uh, you sent it over. I, I was like, that's really interesting. It like catches you, you know, and you have to like kind of double take at it. But that episode was awesome. I mean, her voice is incredible. It was super fun. Yeah, um, thanks for doing that. Of course, thank you. Um, and uh, and on the other side, like on the flip side of things, like would you? like when do you think it's good for an artist to be looking for an agent or like um is there like a certain threshold you think or is it just case by case my answer is simply never <laughs> i really really nice. believe uh in the you know like the field of dreams approach build it and they will come i mean listen i tell my job is like to find new artists so and there are you know and i'm an agent you know, there are people at label specifically A and R that do this all day, every day. Yeah. And so I believe that, um, you know, just focus on what you can control. And that is simply creating the best songs you can, creating the best brand you can and getting it out there on all of these, you know, platforms that are made available to artists nowadays. And that's likely someone's going to find you. Um, if it's really good. Yeah. And so, you know, I do get submissions, um, artists reaching out 
And because my workload, we're all so busy, um, it's difficult to really give that a chance. Yeah. Um, and so I really, I really advise artists to go up. Do, don't, don't say I need an agent. I'm going to go find an agent. Yeah. I really believe an agent will find you. Wow. Yeah. That's great advice. That's great advice. Um, and yeah, I mean, that was going to be my next question, but, uh, for like any artists listening or, or someone who wants to be a part of the tour peachy roster one day is that it's like, just keep growing, keep putting out great music. And if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Totally. I mean, Hey, I'll know if you sell out, you know, that 200 or 300 or 400 cap room in your hotel hometown. Yeah. I'll know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll find out. <laughs> um, you know, because I that's I talk to the buyers and and right. artists and industry all day, and you know, right. so um, I'll we'll find you. Just just get to the point where you're selling out that show, or you mm-hmm. have crazy streaming numbers, or you know, you and people will will come call and knock and. They'll, they'll knock down your door literally <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is true that's true it's, uh, speaking of real quick um talent buyers uh, you're you're rocking the glass house pomona shirt got a shout out john uh <laughs> it's just my, my, I, I love everything to do with southern california before we we started here you know i grew up in huntington beach so i'm an orange county guy and uh man i spent so many incredible nights sweaty as hell night in both chain reaction and the glass house so yeah that's awesome deservingly so shout out to to everyone involved with chain and glass house those are those are legendary places agreed agreed um and speaking of was there ever and this wasn't a question so this is kind of blindsiding you but uh was there ever like a band that you were a huge fan of growing up in those sweaty chain shows that you like eventually got to book a support tour with or like got to was there like one like super rewarding kind of booking that that calls out in your mind i'm sure there's like hundreds but yeah you know what i think um so we have to throw observatory into the mix of of legendary venues as well um and that was a little after you know my teenage years so I didn't go to as many of those like high school concerts or college concerts there, but um, to to have multiple artists sell out the observatory um, was incredible. Yeah. And then you know I also went down to San Diego often to see shows, and uh, working alongside the Frights to curate their own festival. You are gonna hate this fest. Um, in soma and watch it over three years sell out three consecutive years and 2300 people in that sweat box yeah that was super rewarding yeah that's awesome that's so cool i can't wait can't wait for that to is is soma still around actually absolutely yeah awesome so much so much still there amazing do a lot of business in the 500 cap room uh (laughs) That's that's a that's a fun one to do an underplay in. And oh yeah, I course, bet. When you're when you're bigger, uh, yeah, that main stage is a big one. Yeah, I, I think during the sitting on Stacy interview, they they were talking about a, a crazy night there. Um, they said it was yeah, it, a lot of a lot of fun stories there. It sounds like over the years. Um, yeah, those those dudes are loved in San Diego now too. Yeah. And, uh, I went. We did a Valentine's Day show there. Right, that was that's their what last it was. Show. Yep. And uh, you know they got those uh, ecstatic young fans that just yeah. go ape ape shit. So <laughs> yeah. it's super fun. Yeah, just like piercing screams. It was, it was, it's pretty great. Those guys are awesome. Um, but uh, but yeah. So I mean, right now is it just you? Like, are, are is your kind of vision for Torpedo as you go forward? Like, are you gonna hire out a team, some more agents and things, or like, how how do you see it? kind of going in the next few years yeah the the focus from day one here with tour pg is to make sure that my clients the artists that are on tour pg agency right now are getting the most competitive and professional uh service possible from day one and so that's my focus right this second um you know is to give them that and then certainly you know if if it's 
if it makes sense and it and we mesh then I'm I'm, I'm always open to growing yeah that's cool yeah um and this is kind of a a more of a general question but when you're going to like actually book out tours and um obviously there's a ton of booking agents there's a ton of agencies and stuff you have to have good relationships with everyone i imagine right like because i imagine you're talking to like other agents about support slots or about them supporting your artists um so yeah like how does that go i mean i know i always notice a lot of like rosters go out on tour together which is great um but also like they switch off a lot so yeah like what do you just have to keep a good relationship with everyone and like not screw over anyone at any time to like make sure that things don't go bad for you down the road i mean that's certainly the goal is to have a good relationship with everyone sometimes that's impossible you know you just don't get along with certain people and that's the reality but uh you you put that shit aside and and it's you make it about the artist and so, uh, yeah, you, you, you always, whatever their goal is or whatever they would like to do, you go out and you try to, you try to do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, good relationships help, you know, it makes it easier, you know, when you call up that person and, uh, you know, it, conversations can, are, are not always easy, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you yeah. know, at least if there's a risk. That's what it's all about. As long as there's a respect, then uh, we're all good. Yeah, that's great. Got it. And speaking of that, are you um, already like routing tours? Like I know obviously the, the pandemic killed all live shows for a while, but now in certain parts of the country, it's fully open. I feel like um, L.A., I'm starting to see some dates come back in L.A. even. Uh, are you, yeah, are you like already routing 2021, 2022? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean – we're it's it's full go to obviously the time frame is is still up in the air i mean we're considering we're we're looking at fall as uh, a high probability right now we're certainly all hoping for it that's yeah. for sure yeah. um so i've got a couple bigger um rescheduled tours that will be announcing here in the next well the gardens is actually uh announced already that's in November, December of this year, which is pretty incredible to think, uh, you know, we found such a high demand for people wanting to attend concerts. Uh, you know, we put that up and uh, about a month ago and we saw tickets just fly off the shelf for That's amazing. Um, and so it was just a boost of confidence that, you know, Fans are super eager to go to concerts. Yeah. So I've got a couple of rescheduled tours for the fall, um, and certainly working on a handful of tours for 2022. And then some teams and I had agreed that let's leave the calendar for this year open, so that when we all get that green that that green light to book where shows will happen that they're completely available. And we've actually found that to work in our favor in a few cases. You know, I've booked a couple shows in August for Southern California. I've booked a show in Connecticut for as early as June 26. Um, so Dang. with these artists having their calendars open, now it's like, yeah, we can do whatever. Let's right. do it. Right. That's a good plan. That's a good plan. Um, so are you like, I mean, yeah, I guess are, are all the artists pretty excited to, to get going back? Is there, because I'm sure you have to manage some, I mean, there's a lot of anxiety, I imagine, for some artists to go back and I'm sure some are just chomping at the bit. Um, so yeah, uh, does that just kind of run the spectrum across all your roster about like actually excitement to get back playing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, over the, over the roster of, 20 artists that you know I represent there's a wide spectrum of feeling yeah. and opinions um, and nonetheless all of them are, are eager and excited to play concerts whenever that is safe under their terms yeah. um, so that could be as early as tomorrow that could be as late as potentially fall of 2022 right. and everywhere in between Got but it. again, it's um, I can advise as to what I think is going to happen. But that's been the 
the crazy thing about this whole pandemic is we're all going through this for the first time. Right. We're navigating very much uncharted territory. Right. So, you know, and we're being fed the same information as the general public, um, you know, the news or whatever article you choose to, to read. And so we're just making edgy, trying to make educated guesses um, up until more recently where we're actually being fed, hey, this date, shit's going to open 100%. Yeah, true. In, in certain regions. Yeah. So we're starting to see that a bit. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, want, I don't want to keep you here all night, but um, I want to ask you just a couple more questions if that's cool. Absolutely, man. Awesome. Um, so one thing that's become a huge thing, at least before the pandemic, and I think will remain, is how many festivals have come into the to the landscape. Um, is is a music festival like the cream of the crop, top of the totem pole, like that's what you're trying to get to as an artist? Or is it like, and do you like plan entire routes around getting a music festival? Obviously there's a range of festivals, but I'm talking about like, the major ones from like Lollapalooza to Coachella and, and Outside Lands and like all those. Is that like the, the main goal? For a lot of artists, they view festivals as the Mecca. Yes. Yeah. And every artist wants to play festival at this point. Right. Um, because it's, it's just such a, a big look in their opinion. Yeah. Um, often. So when, it, when a festival is confirmed, um, you know, everything is such a variable. Where is, where is the festival? Where is the artist located? Um, how much is it? What's, what's the guarantee? You know, uh, do they fly in, fly out, um, and just do it that way? Do they use that as an anchor date for a tour or for a regional run of, you know, five or six days? Do they need, you know, that, that five or six more dates so that they get those guarantees to make the trip out there financially feasible. Right. Um, right. Right. You know, a lot of those things go in it's, and so it's really a, where is the artist at with what is the guarantee and what they're wanting to do. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. One other thing I, I wanted to kind of mention is um, for bands that like, want to get on touring slots like i know that that's a huge thing for i'm sure any indie band right now that's listening to this is like how do i get to open for the garden how do i get to open for hockey dad like um do like how does that even work is it a variety of if a band just has a really likes this band like the headlining band just gets to kind of choose or is it like you give suggestions to them or like sometimes they just don't even care and they're just like yeah whoever like just throw on whoever you know what I mean? Like, does it always range of like a case by case again? Yeah, it's per artist again here. You know, every every artist is different. And so their requests, how they work, uh, their decision making, all of those things are a variable amongst every artist. Um, I found, honestly, most of my headlining artists um, have an idea. Uh, or ideas that they of artists that they would like to bring out. You know, I think if you look at it from the simplest way, and again, I was a tour manager, so I kind of, I, I saw the, you know, I was a part of these six week tours from the road side of things. Right. And right. I, uh, artists, these headlining bands, you know, if you, of course, everything again is a variable, but if you don't need a, a ton of help, let's say, you know, in, in selling out the rooms that you're headlining, you know, oftentimes you want to spend those four, six or eight weeks um, on tour with friends, people True. that you certainly enjoy, or maybe at least know. Um, and so to take out, you know, an artist that you don't know personally, there's a little bit of that anxiety of what if we hate each other? <laughs> right. Now I got to, right. now we got to spend the next, you know, four weeks together, <laughs> bickering, you know, over who got the chips in the green room, <laughs> right. or, right, right, you know, right. why didn't we get this off our rider, right. shit like that. Yeah. Um, so oftentimes, a lot of my artists on my rosters, they, they kind of lead that, that conversation. Um, and I ultimately 
you know, start with a small list and, and navigate for them. Got it. Um, but it starts really with them a lot of the times. And hey, there are circumstances where the artist, the headlining artist doesn't give a shit. And it's like, hey, manager, agent, you know, tell me what is best here. Yeah. And that's where, you know, we really can sit down and, and advise um, on numbers and, and stuff like right. that. And that comes right. into play. And the, there's other, other circumstances where, where it's either a co-headline tour or the goal is to jump up in room sizes. And, you know, how are you going to do the thousand cap room after selling out the 500 cap room, you know, six or eight months prior? Um, how are you going to make that jump right. most successful? or and and lower the risk um you know you're going to take out bands that are worth tickets uh you know if you're now projecting you're worth 700 well you really need 300 more tickets to fill that thousand cap room right um so that's where we're looking for artists that have ticket value right and what is that ticket value and how much money is it? all of those things come into play and so i've always also been an advocate to artists to strategically build ticket value um and and the way that you can do that is headlining yeah um so Got you it. know when you're when you sell out uh the moroccan lounge in la you know on a 15 dollar ticket now you're worth 250 tickets uh in los angeles on a 15 dollar ticket smart yeah and, it, it allows you to um you know get that threshold find your value right I mean, and yeah, that goes back to the mantra or, or your your great advice of like, build it and they'll come. Just keep building it. You have to kind of keep doing it on your own. And then, uh, and one thing that I always say is too, just to be, just to be kind to everyone and like bands that you play with on shows to like try to be friendly and try to make friends. You don't know, you know, not not in a way of just trying to be advantageous, but like. You never know what could come of a relationship. Like so many things that have happened in, in my short career um, have be, have come from that. Just like literally just meeting people at a bar and just being nice and talking about things. And hey, how can we be creative together? And how could we do this and that? And so um, I think that that goes with the band world, right? Like, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Yeah. I'm always saying, you know, especially for those artists that are out of very beginning developmental stage and you know they they need essentially need favors they need help you yeah. know and and being nice to people goes a long way as long as you're real about it and it's not fake shit right. you know right. you're be nice yeah you know it, mo most likely things will come back around to uh to work in your favor if you're yeah. a nice human <laughs> exactly agreed and thank you for being nice, Troy, and for, for doing this interview, my friend. I, I, I very much appreciate it. Um, let me, I'll, I'll get you out of here. I know we're running a little late, but the last last question, um, what what is kind of the best piece of advice that you have gotten? And, and I know you've pretty much already answered this, but um, what's like a best piece of advice you could then put forward for anybody wanting to become an agent or, or kind of follow your, follow your steps? Good question. I like this one, and I've thought about this one for a while. <laughs> good, good. But it's take your emotion and your fucking ego out of business. <laughs> Great advice. Simply put, like, yeah. it's not about you. Uh, it's, you know, especially from the agent side, that's what I believe. So take your emotion and your ego and put it to the side. And especially in this business world. Yeah. I love it. Simple as that. Simple That's and great cool. advice. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I, I'm so excited for everything with you and your roster, and I, I really hope we could keep working together. And I've been throwing shows and, and doing things in that world, so that'd be fun. But, of course, the door is always open for episodes of Chad's Home. Hopefully we could just keep going down the roster and just getting everybody on the show one at a time. Um <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, just thank you so much again for, for supporting what I do and, and just being a great person. I, I really appreciate it. Dude, I love it, man. And I'm a huge supporter of what you're doing. And uh, I, I, I don't think I'm an interview guy. I don't like to be out there in the public, but I will say, I think this is, this is certainly my first one um, 
in regards to tour PG. And, uh, um, and I, and I thought about it. I was like, you know, I want to do it with Chad. Like, That's awesome. He seems like a, like a, a, a good dude and doing good things. And certainly, uh, We've all been. I'm. I'm at the position where I'm starting something, and it's fucking scary. And you yeah. need support. Yeah. And so we need to support each other. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. And and yeah, I appreciate it. And congratulations again. Um, was there was there anything else by the way you wanted to kind of mention or talk about before we signed off? No, man. I, I I'm good. Um, check out the artists. It's all about you know. I'm I'm super proud of every single artist on the roster of Tour Peachy. Um, I, you know, I go into work every single day, believing in every single one of them. And, uh, it's, it's rewarding to, uh, to help bands, you know, achieve their dreams. Yeah. I love it. It's a perfect way to sign off. Thank you. Thank you again so much, Troy. And, and yeah, um, I'll put your like socials and the, the Torpeachy website and everything in the description of the video. Um, and yeah, with that. Such a pleasure talking to you, my friend. Thank you so much. Cool. Yeah, that was fun. All right.